Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com, and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. If you're new, a warm welcome to you, and if you're returning and watching my videos every week, an equally warm welcome back to you. And uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you find the videos I provide every week of use. And uh, thank you to all the uh, positive comments in the. Uh, you guys have been posted in the comment section. Um, I really do appreciate the positive ones. And uh, before we get started into the, uh, the week's analysis, just wanted to go over a question, a fundamental question, a bit of fundamental education. Um, and really the poll was, what effect should reduction of bond purchases by a central bank have on a currency? And 203 votes, 77% of you voted currency appreciation and uh, 23 voted currency depreciation. So the actual answer is currency appreciation. The reason why is because um, bond purchases from central banks, um, banks have to increase their balance sheet and by increasing their balance sheet, they're really increasing the money supply, right? So they're increasing supply of an asset to buy bond purchases. So, um, if they're increasing supply, then prices should move down, right? Because there's more supply than demand. But if they start to reduce bond purchases, meaning they're reducing their balance sheet, reducing the supply uh, or the amount of debt that they're buying, yeah, because bonds are basically debt. So um, if they reduce the amount of supply and reduce their balance sheet, then the reduction of supply should cause currency appreciation so well done to those of you the 77 percent of you who got that question right and i'll be going over some other um questions in uh, the upcoming weeks so now when you're um when you're looking at fundamental uh, um, news and analysis, you now understand that when central banks are starting to talk about taper and tapering bonds, meaning the reduction of bond purchases, that should have uh, a, an appreciation effect on the currency, right? The currency should strengthen when, when you start to see reduction, tapering of bonds and increase in interest rates, etc. Anyways, let's get into uh, uh, the um, this week's uh, analysis and just in case you're new our trade process is to really apply fundamental analysis to establish trade direction and then apply technical analysis so our supply and demand strategies to time trade entries establish profit targets and risk management so let's get into uh the upcoming weeks uh fundamental analysis news and let's zoom in on the week ahead and the US China uh, will be publishing inflation updates for July in the coming week while second quarter GDP releases from the UK uh, is really what we're looking at um, and factory production numbers from the Eurozone will also be keenly watched. Other important data following includes US consumer confidence, Germany trade balance, Japan current account and Australia business morale elsewhere, central banks, okay, those are currencies that we don't trade. So for me, really the important, the really important news um, is going to be inflation, which is probably expected to be high for in the US anyway, but the UK second quarter GDP should be um, positive and uh, we'll get into some uh, some um, UK news as the pound um, central banks have uh, Bank of England anyway have uh, uh, signaled that they're looking to hike interest rates which is uh, positive but the data has to support the narrative before a rate hike can uh, happen the data has to support that uh, decision so let's get into now the uh, the technicals and a bit more in-depth fundamental analysis starting off on the dollar index uh, dxy and the dollar index last week we had really um, a really nice uh, move off of this uh, demand zone and the dollar index is just a measure of dollar strength against the major currencies like the uh, euro the yen the pound and uh, the australian dollar and what we've had from last week uh, is basically prices came down into uh, this this demand zone, and then we had again positive news, and really it was really driven by 
the expectation for jobs. So US jobs, everything you could want and more. So the US jobs market has posted a solid set of figures for July with employment gains exceeding expectations, unemployment falling, wages accelerating and the participation rate increasing. Momentum is building towards early federal um, reserve policy action. And that's what really drives prices in the medium to long term is uh, understanding um you know uh, gdp and uh, where we are in the business cycle are we in the recovery phase the expansion phase and if we are then the currency should appreciate and uh, employment and jobs is one of the uh, markers that we use to uh, to understand whether a currency is uh, is strong right so um again last week the expectation of that you know, uh, came into play. We had a bit of a pullback into that nice zone, and then you know uh, we got the, the news on Friday, positive jobs news, and then we had the dollar really start to go higher. So um, again, if you're looking for any kind of buy trades on the dollar, this we just use this as confluence. So any kind of pullbacks into a demand zone is um, you know is, is a buying opportunity, and as long as the data supports the narrative. Uh, we should be uh, on the upside, and I did say I have been saying that. Um, if, if if anything, I'm I'll probably long dollar um, in the private mentoring group. Uh, the guys know that the the currency pairs I've been trading against the uh, the dollar. You know, like the yen and the Swiss franc, and uh, as long as risk stays on, basically it's uh, it's buying. It's really kind of buying the dollar against uh, the weaker currencies. If you do think that the dollar may start to get weaker, um, then you're looking at you know somewhere around this zone to look for short trades. But as I say, pretty much every week, um, fundamentals really and risk sentiment is what drives market valuation and drives price in the medium to long term. There's no technical analysis level that's going to stand in the way of um, any kind of. Uh, um, uh, fundamental bias right so just because there's a supply zone here um, the chances of it uh, you know working out um, when you know you've got strong dollar buying potentially uh, is is slim not to say that it won't there might be some profit taking up here but event as long as uh, we've got positive sentiment and the expectation of Fed tapering and a rate hike potentially on uh, into the next maybe six months to a year or well, probably about a year or so then um, the market is going to look to price that in it doesn't take it doesn't doesn't look uh, or take cues or take direction from technical analysis so um, I think the dollar is on the up uh, and up and as long as uh, again data supports that narrative we should continue to see dollar strength going into the uh, the dollar yen and again uh, dollar yen did come down to a zone in fact this really should have been drawn from here and that's where prices did come down into because you've got just explain you've got the last bearish candle before prices make new highs right so that's rare where the strongest area of demand actually is and then prices came down into that 10890 area and then pretty much bounced from there really nice uh, trade that um, and again positive sentiment risk on uh, the Japanese yen doesn't do well in a risk on environment um, so uh, pretty much this is what you're going to continue to see will this supply zone uh, hold maybe maybe not but I'm going to get rid of that and just uh, just pretty much say if you do want to get short at any point then yeah as long as prices come into this supply zone there is just there is a, a supply zone there but for me I think demand um, and buying the dollar is really where it's at. So if we can create some, maybe some higher lows and higher highs, and pull back into that zone would be really, really nice for a uh, for a buy trade. Or if prices can come back to this 109 area, that would be quite nice for a buy. Um, moving on to the dollar Swiss. Dollar Swiss um, didn't quite come into this demand zone down at the lows, but uh, now it's created proof of values create a nice demand zone there so if prices ever do come back down into this zone that is going to be a really nice buy trade for a sell trade you're looking at um, this area here but again the Swiss franc is really not the uh, the currency to buy in a risk on environment 
Um, if risk starts to come back off again, again, concerns about uh, the uh, maybe global growth, China slowing down, the coronavirus spreading, then possibly, you know, you could see, um, you know, look, look for short trades if prices come up into that zone. But for now, I think the, 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 um, uh, the market is really kind of forward thinking. Um, and uh, I think the, uh, uh, the dollar really is the one to, uh, to buy at the moment. It's positive sentiment all around. Dollar CAD, it's a dollar CAD. Um, again, this is this is again two currencies that are kind of competing with each other. You've got uh, the US, which are potentially hiking rates, as well as Canada hiking rates. And um, Canada didn't have the greatest news on on Friday either. So Canada jobs recovery continues in July amid reopenings. So the nation adds 94,000 jobs in July, mostly full-time positions, uh, but the gain was less than the 150 jobs uh, expected by economists. But there is uh, there was uh, some positive news was that the unemployment rate fell from fell to 7.5 from 7.8 in July. So unemployment is moving in the right direction. So um, again, you've got two currencies, Bank of Canada uh, as well, two two central banks, I should say. Bank of Canada and the Federal Reserve looking to hike rates at some point in 2022, 2023. Um, so when you've got two currencies that are really, you know, uh, looking to uh, strengthen their currencies, it's it, it's a harder trade, right? What you actually want to look for is a currency that is looking to, um, uh, in, obviously, hike rates and then a current, against a currency that is not hiking rates anytime soon is lagging behind. So that's more of the way you would find the divergence, right? That's what is known as divergence trading. Um, and uh, so with the, the dollar CAD, for me, um, it's a more of a difficult read. And when it's more of a difficult read, then pretty much I personally am not trading it. But if you are, then I would probably say this one two eight one two seven fifty area is probably the best area to look for any kind of long trades and uh, um, so any short trades and any long trades looking for probably a pullback into um, this one two four area for a buy. Uh, moving on to the New Zealand dollar, US dollar, and the New Zealand dollar again is one of my buys, just not against the, the US dollar. Um, so uh, we did have again uh, some positive news come out. And we've sold off for the uh, um, uh, the US dollar is kind of increased in strength, but um, from the perspective of a um, or, or or again two central banks looking to hike rates and the New Zealand dollar, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand are probably going to be one of the first to potentially hike rates. Maybe at some point this year is the rumor. Could be this month, or it could be in. Um, I think it's like September, October, if not this month. I think this the most. This month might be a bit too premature, but if they do, then uh, you should expect really prices to to, to rise um, and the, the the New Zealand dollar to appreciate. Um, but again, with two central banks looking to high rates. Uh, for me, uh, this is more of a difficult read. I'd probably, my, my, my bias is skewed more towards the New Zealand dollar buy. So any kind of uh, moves into a demand zone is really where you should be uh, looking. And let me just tidy this chart up a little bit. If anything, I'll probably have to pull this up to here. And it's gonna be, uh, I think this whole area really is gonna be demand right there. So let me just uh, get rid of this. So it looks a bit, it does look a bit messy. Um, but at the end of the day, this is the way we draw our zones and we can always clear and clarify whereabouts in this demand zone. We want to be biased by looking at things like uh, horizontal support and resistance, um, both on the uh, daily and also some intraday zones as well. So within that demand zone, where exactly do you want to be a uh, buyer? And that's where you use uh, support and resistance uh, from uh, uh, the horizontal, diagonal, and also things like moving averages um, to uh, to decide where you want to be actually a buyer within this zone. But overall, it's not really a pair that I'm looking to trade anytime uh, anytime soon, as there's no uh, there's no monetary policy divergence. Moving on to the pound dollar, the pound dollar. So we had some positive news around the dollar last week. Um, it was to do with the central bank 
looking to potentially hike rates and uh, so Bank of England rings alarm bell for Sunak who is the UK's Chancellor of the Exchequer that rock bottom rates may rise so so basically central banks pledge for modest tightening may end uh, the aid and basically the aid of you know uh, uh, monetary uh, uh, support you know for public finances so um, so the uh, chancellor is in a bit of a, a sticky place because of the fact that he wants uh, to continue the uh, low borrowing rates, but the, the central bank is saying, "Well, we may ha we might have to hike rates, right? We, have, we might have to hike interest rates because of inflation and um, potential." Um, uh, uh, I guess the fact that inflation is getting a bit out of hand, so they may have to look to start to hike rates soon, um, sooner rather than later. So um, you've got a chance there of the exchequer um, against really the, uh, the, the the Bank of England. So with that being said, the rumor is that the Bank of England may want to hike rates. So for me, it's literally buying the pound, but against the dollar, Probably, uh, I would say probably, definitely not. I'd be buying a pound against something like the the pound uh, against the yen or the Swiss uh, or the Swiss franc. But if you are looking to trade this pair, then any kind of shorts in and around this area or up into this area is where you're looking for short trades. If you're looking for long trades, it's really a pullback down. It's just one three seven area if it gets down here for a long trade. But um, again, not really a great pair to look to trade. Uh, Euro dollar euro dollar and again you can see the effect of monetary policy uh, when the federal reserve came out back in june talking about um a, a potential tightening and uh, uh tapering and uh, potential hiking rates you can see pretty much what's happened the european central bank on the other hand are very dovish right very dovish meaning that they're not looking to um, hike rates uh, or even think about uh, tapering at all. And uh, they won't rush ECB, European Central Bank won't rush to signal future of pandemic program. So, um, you know, given how much uncertainty, uh, sorry, given the uncertainty, given how much time is left, there is no need to decide on that, says uh, Kaz Kazakhs who also leads Latvia Central Bank. We will discuss it um, at the moment, um, and uh, but at the moment it would be still be premature. So they're talking about you know the bond purchases um, that they're that they're doing and potentially you know reducing their bond purchases. So policymakers have set up their September meeting with new forecasts will become available as uh, as a crucial session to scrutinize the euro area's economy and its prospects and to start debating post pandemic monetary stimulus so again um, they're talking about the uh, uh, whether they're going to uh, still support the economy um, and and buy bonds or whether they're going to reduce it but they're, they're not they're not thinking about it what they you know they're going to um, maybe announce it in the future whereas um, uh, the, the Federal Reserve are really kind of announcing it now but uh, they did say that uh, where is it I think somewhere here there's a quote um, that talks about uh, it goes yes is it it's quite unlikely that we will come out in late March 2022 and say this is it we've done our job and we terminate it Kazakh says um, we would like to warn the markets in advance but only as much as reasonably possible. So what he's saying is, is that um, if they are going to uh, reduce, uh, you know, uh, uh, bond purchases and taper, then um, they would, um, they, they're going to signal that they will. They're going to tell the market that they will. Um, but for now, they're keeping stum on it, which means that they're lagging behind, which obviously is the reason why you're seeing this happen right euro is getting weaker and the dollar is getting stronger so prices came up to this nice uh, supply zone again from last week and uh, if you guys were looking to sell well done on that trade right there um, potentially looking for any kind of buy trades um, there could be some profit taking here but I think the path of least resistance for now is to the downside until the European Central Bank start to get a bit more hawkish. Um, I think the uh, this this really is going to continue going to the downside, or unless the uh, dollar 
actually misses any kind of uh, data targets. So uh, those are your options really, um, but I think the path of least resistance is to the downside and will continue to be. Uh, Euro yen, Euro yen are stuck in a bit of a range, uh, this range between the supply and this demand zone. We've got, let me move this up here slightly. Here we go. So um, again, with both really currencies uh, quite um, uh, weak in a sense that um, the European Central Bank are quite dovish and also the Japanese yen are very dovish as well. So when you have two uh, uh, depreciating currencies, you should actually enter into some sort of range. So um, really nothing to write home about with this, not really a pair that I'm really too interested in at the moment. Um, I do think though, once the Euro start to become hawkish, then I do think that this pair is gonna be a really good pair to look for uh, by trade. So any pullbacks, and you wanna try and get in early and anticipate some European um, central bank uh, hawkishness, and any pullbacks to this one, two, eight levels would be um, a, a decent uh, opportunity to look for any kind of buy trades. If there's risk off comes into the market, any pullbacks into supply zones will be a sell. Aussie dollar and uh, the Australian dollar, uh, pretty much the RBA are quite dovish. The um, uh, Australia suffering with uh, some more potential lockdowns from you know the virus um, and the RBA have come out and they are pretty dovish as well. They're in a wait and see approach, whereas the, um, the Federal Reserve are looking to again um, uh, high crates at some point soon and I say soon but within maybe in another year or two so they're ahead really ahead of the uh, RBA for now so again the path of these resistance it looks like it's to the downside and until the um, RBA really start to um, become a bit more hawkish then I think there is some upside definitely a lot of upside and again the, uh, the Australian dollar has lots of upside potential but we have to wait for the data to support that um, rate uh, potential rate hike or at least bond tapering narrative so um, until that happens again the path of least resistance I think is to the downside so more uh, more downward pressure um, probably on the Australian dollar against the US dollar. But again, if you want to be a seller, then I'd probably recommend uh, not, not financial advice, of course, but this is going to be the area that you'd probably want to look for any kind of uh, sell trades. Moving on to the Aussie yen and Aussie yen. Um, again, the uh, my bias would be more to buy the Australian dollar. But um, with the uh, Australian um, central bank not being as, as hawkish as um, expected, I think if any any kind of pullbacks uh, are really some decent buying opportunities, because I do think that the Australian dollar should come good at some point um, within the next uh, few months. But uh, I think in the short term, it does look like the uh, the Australian dollar might be slightly a bit weak. But with the against the Japanese yen, I think it still should potentially have some upside, some more upside potential, or at least range probably from here. But any kind of pullbacks into any demand zones, I think are buying opportunities. I wouldn't necessarily look for buying the, look to buy it again, unless again, uh, you know, there is a lot of risk off sentiment. Moving on to gold, finally gold and gold, again, moves inversely to the dollar. Uh, we did have a couple of weeks ago a nice little uh, buy trade as prices come down into this demand zone, and then as prices come up into this supply zone. Again, if you want, if you are looking to um, sell the dollar, then you're looking to uh, the play is to buy gold, or if you're looking to buy the dollar um, and you can't get on getting on buying the dollar, then you're looking to sell gold. And this is basically what's happened. Um, uh, gold uh, is a hedge against inflation. But uh, with the central bank, the Fed, looking to high rates at some point, um, money will be coming out of gold and going into the dollar. Reason why is because the dollar starts to, it actually starts to, but it pays, an, it pays a yield, it pays an interest, whereas gold doesn't. So, um, you know, people, investors generally want a return on their, um, uh, on their investment other than just looking at holding you know and, and uh, asset appreciation so with that being said with the with the, uh, with the dollar strengthening you're seeing gold start to sell off and um, if you do want to be a buyer of gold potentially 
meaning that the dollar, you think the dollar is, um, is still going to stay a bit weak or may turn around this week, then this is actually a really nice zone to look for any kind of buy trades for gold. But personally, um, you know, gold isn't necessarily clear cut. I think the, 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 the bias is really with dollar strength at the moment. So we could see more short trades um, uh, coming into focus. So any kind of pullbacks then into that demand zone, probably from the uh 1810 area around here that would be a potential uh selling opportunity if you have the medium to long-term view that the dollar will strengthen and gold should weaken um anyways guys that's it for this week um again hope you have a great trading week don't forget to like subscribe and share take care until the next video